Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel. Before we start, do subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Today we are going to solve Cambridge IGCSC Mathematics Paper 1 Core 0580 Variant 1 to May June 2020 Part 1. Question number 1A. Write in figures the number 53,035. A very easy question. So 53,035. We don't have 100. So in place of 100, 0, 53,035. Write 8,379 correct to the nearest 100. 100 is 3, right? In the place of 100, we have 3. We have to round it there. So draw a line. The number after the 100 is 7. If it is 5 or more, you add 1 to the previous number. So we got 8, 3 plus 1, 4. And the other two digits, which was 7 and 9, we'll replace it with 0. So 8,400. Question number 2a. Write down the mathematical name for this type of angle. We know that there are three types of angle. If it is 90 degrees, it is a right angle. If it is less than 90 degrees, then it is an acute angle. And if it is more than 90 degrees, it is an obtuse angle. So from the diagram, we can see that this is an acute angle. Question number 2b. A and B lie on a circle center O. So this is the point A and B. Write down the mathematical name for line AB. If we have two points and they are joined together with a line and it does not pass from the center, then that is called a chord. B2, OA is 8 centimeter. So this is 8 centimeter. Write down the length of this diameter. Whenever we have a line joining the center with a point on the circle, we get the radius. So our radius is 8 centimeter. Diameter is 2 times the radius. So diameter will be 2 multiplied by 8, 16 centimeter. Question number three, write down the reciprocal of 10. Reciprocal means we just flip over. So this is 10 over one. The reciprocal is going to be one over 10. So that's our answer. Question number four, find the value of square root 196. You can just use a calculator directly. You will find the square root pattern there and write 196, you will get the answer as 14. Even for B, you don't have to do anything. You just have to use the calculator, 15 to the power of 3, which will give us 3,375. 15 to the power of 3 is also the same as 15 multiplied by 15 multiplied by 15. Question number 5 is a little tricky. Put one pair of brackets in each statement to make it correct. So you will have to try and figure out where it is that you need to put the bracket. But for a starter, you know that 16 is the highest number here. So 16 divided by what will give you 1? 16 divided by 16 will give you 1. So if you put a bracket here, this, when you put in the calculator, you will get 16. Because first, we use the bit mass or pod mass, whatever you call it. The first thing in the order of operation is multiplication. So 4 multiplied by 2, 8. 8 plus 8, 16. And 16 divided by 16 will give us 1. Now in the second case, we have the same numbers, but it is 12. Now it's a big number. So you will have to figure out how we can get that. Whenever we put the bracket, you will have to check what works out. 
In this case, 16 divided by 8 will give us 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. And 6 multiplied by 2 will give us 12. So that's the answer. Question number 6. We have been given a pie chart. 840 students in a school are asked if they want a change of school uniform. The results are shown in the, picture, in the pie chart. 71 degrees do not know, 114 degrees yes, 175 degrees is no. Show that the number of students who said yes is 266. You need to know a formula here and you need to remember that two types of questions you can get in a pie chart. One is to find the number of students or whatever is the number of frequency or you need to find the degree. Here the degree has been given and you want to find the frequency or the number. So we write the degree that the sector that we are looking at is yes. So that is 114. Divide that by 360. Because the total degree angle at a point in a circle is 360 degrees. When you add all of these, it is 360 and multiply by the total number of students, which is 840. This will give you 266. Number seven, change 5.3 kilometers into meters. A very easy question. You just need to know that you need to multiply from kilometer to meters. You need to multiply by 1000. This will give you 5300 meters. Question number eight. The scale drawing shows the positions of town A and town B. The scale is one centimeter rep represents 12 kilometers. A. Find the actual distance between town A and town B. A very easy question. We have to measure from A to B and we will get nine centimeter. And then for the actual distance we multiply the centimeter that we got by 12. 9 multiplied by 12 will give us 108 kilometers. Sometimes when you print the exam paper and when you are solving, maybe you may not get the same measurement that is given to you in the mark scheme. It could be because of the paper size or, you know, some adjustments in the printing. So it's fine. Don't worry. You just need to understand whatever you get you multiply by the number given here b town c is 72 kilometers from town a and 96 kilometers from town b on the scale drawing construct the position of town c now how are we supposed to do this we have a and b here this is nine centimeter then we have town c is 72 kilometers from A. We have in kilometers, we want to change it to centimeters. So we will divide 72 by 12 and we will get six. So we'll make an arc like that of six centimeter from A. Then 96 kilometer from town B. So 96 divided by 12 will give us eight. And we will take 8 centimeter from B. So wherever they make the arc, we join them together. This will be 6 centimeter. And here will be uh, 8 centimeter. This is how your final diagram will look like. Remember to write your units. Question number 9. We have been given a diagram and we have to find the order of rotational symmetry of the diagram. If you can see this side and this side is the same. Two sides are same, the same shading is there, the same number of squares are shaded in the same manner. Therefore, the rotational, the order of the rotational symmetry is two. Question number 10 is a bearing question. The bearing of B from A is 105. So A is 105. 
bearing is always taken from the north and it goes clockwise. So this is the north and we are going clockwise. So this is the bearing of B from A, 105. Now we want to find the bearing of A from B. From B means again from north we are going and clockwise. So this is what we need to find. So this is outside our line, right? Whenever you want to find that, we just add to the angle which we have on the inside with 180. That will give us 285. I have put up a video explaining all the different type of bearing questions. Do watch it. It will help you. 11. Write down a square number greater than 10. You know what are square numbers, right? When you multiply the number by itself, you can write any number. You know, 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. We want a number greater than 10. So 4 times 4, 16. Or 25, 36, whatever. An irrational number. Irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a fraction. Any prime number that you have, you can write it as a root. That is an irrational prime number. Irrational number. So it's a square root 5, square root 2. I also made a video on different types of numbers. You can watch that. Question number 12. Points. A, B, and C are shown on the grid. Write down the coordinates of point C. When we want to write down a coordinate of a point, we write X first and then Y. The value of X we get from the X axis. This is our X axis. This is Y axis. Our point C is here. First, the X axis we go to, we got 3. Then the Y axis. 1. So the coordinates of point C are 3 and 1. We don't need to write this or this. 12b on the grid plot point D so that ABCD is a parallelogram. We got A, B and C. A parallelogram is a shape where the opposite two sides are parallel to each other. Let's just join the points that we have to understand clearly. So we need D. You can make out that D is going to be somewhere here. From B, if we want to go to C, how do we go? We go two down and one right. Same way from A, we will go two down and one right. So this is our D. If you draw the shape, Let's just draw it so you can see it clearly. If you join all the points, it's a parallelogram. Moving to part C. On the grid plot point E so that EA is equal to negative 4, 3. We have to find E. E is not given to us. But before we do that, let me explain to you the column vector. The top number represents x and the down y. If our x is positive, we move to the right. If x is negative, we move left. If y is positive, we shift up. If y is negative, we shift down. Now that being understood, we got Ea is negative 4, 3. But we don't have E. So how can we draw the column vector? We cannot. What we can do is we can, instead of EA, we can write AE. When we do that, our signs will change. So negative 4 will become 4 and 3 will become negative 3. So if you change the direction, the signs change. We had EA, now we have AE. From A to E, if I want to go, I will move. 4 to the right. Remember positive to the right. So 4 units to the right. 1, 2, 3 and 4. And then negative 3, 3 units down. 1, 2 and 3. This here is our E. Did you understand? 
if i've helped you in any way do subscribe to my channel like the video share it with your friends and do write a comment in the comment section because i'm making these videos just to help you and it motivates me to do more thank you let's move forward question number 13 the height h meters of a tower is 76.3 meters correct to one decimal place complete the statement of h so we have to write the upper bound and the lower bound or the limits of accuracy when we have to write correct to one decimal place remember this very well we will add 0.05 and subtract 0.05 add to get the upper bound subtract to get the lower bound we write the lower bound first and then the upper bound so from 76.3 you subtract 0.05 and you will get 76.25 then from 76.3 you add 0.05 and the answer is 76.35 so remember this rule one decimal place you add or subtract 0.05 if it's a whole number then you will add and subtract 0.5 number 14 when you look at the question you might think that this is a difficult question don't assume that it's difficult read the question slowly slowly what you understand write it down and solve it it's easy rovers united and city are football team there are three rovers united and city rovers scored eight x goals so rovers is x gold and we have united scored let me write down united it scored eight goals more than rovers more means what you are adding right so it is x plus 8 and city scored three goals less than less than what twice the number of goals scored by rovers twice the number of goals twice means multiply by 2 so rover scored x goals twice will be 2 multiply by x and then from that less 3 goals so 2x minus 3 the three teams scored a total of 117 goals when you add all of them together you will get 117 goals write down and solve an equation to find the value of x So we have x plus x plus eight plus two x minus three is equal to one one seven. Add the x's together. X plus x plus two x is four x, and eight minus three is five. This is a plus five. When you shift to the other side, it will be negative five. So you will get hundred and twelve. And to find x, we are multiplying by four, right? Four multiplied by x. So when we shift to the other side, we are dividing by four. This will give us twenty-eight. So x is equal to twenty-eight is our answer. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. For question number fifteen onwards, watch part two. I hope I've been able to help you. Thank you for watching.